What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So since it has been a minute since I've done a video on any transfer portal news, I figured I would just go ahead and do one video going over all of the biggest names that are currently out there in the portal and some of the biggest acquisitions that have already happened that I haven't already touched on yet in another video that I've made. And just you know, my initial thoughts on each of these players as players and then where they may end up going if they haven't already landed somewhere. Things like that. So let's just go ahead and jump into the video. I'm going to start off with Caleb Williams, who I have already made a video on, but I feel like we still need to do another update because we have a little bit more information on him. It already almost seems like a done deal at this point that Williams is going to end up at USC. He's likely the biggest name that the portal is going to see this offseason, uh, and he's an absolute superstar quarterback. There was once a lot of noise around him going to Georgia or even Auburn. That seems to have died down a lot. Now it seems... Like, it's almost guaranteed to be USC, especially Mario Williams from Oklahoma has going to USC. The uh, USC quarterback, Jackson Dart, has entered the portal and will be leaving USC now. So that seems like almost a guarantee that Caleb Williams is going to be on his way in and following Lincoln Riley to USC. And if that ends up being true, then they're likely to be the head and shoulders favorite in the Pac-12 this season. And Williams could also add more portal, uh, portal players to USC later on as he's the kind of guy being an infectious talent and a big five-star quarterback that a lot of people want to play for and a lot of people are going to want to follow um and and he he's like i said he's probably the most talented player that we're going to see in the portal this entire offseason and so he undoubtedly can bring a lot of guys with him and he is definitely the biggest domino that's yet to officially fall but all the indicators are currently pointing to Lincoln Riley and USC for this uber talented quarterback. I have also heard a little bit about maybe Ole Miss, but I seriously doubt it. It seems very much likely that he's going to Southern California. Which brings me to the next name in the portal, and that is Jackson Dart. I just mentioned him briefly uh, leaving USC, which is almost proof that Caleb Williams is going there to replace him. But don't let that uh, you know make you think that Dart is not a good quarterback or anything along those lines. Don't let that cloud your opinion of him because he is still an incredibly talented quarterback. And he was in many ways a victim of COVID in high school um, because it greatly limited the film on him and it hurt his evaluation. There are a lot of evaluators who were uncertain about where to rank him because they just didn't have enough film to go off of. So there was a lot of concern once he got to USC that maybe he was actually underrated because once he got there, there were so many people just raving about him and how he was clearly the future of the program, how ridiculously talented he was and things like that. Obviously, adding Lincoln Riley has changed that um, completely, but still, the point still stands that he is an incredibly talented quarterback um, that has immense potential to be a great starter at an elite Power 5 level program. And whoever lands him is getting a young like I said, super talented quarterback to develop going forward because he should still have at least three years of eligibility um, wherever he ends up at. As for where he will land, I really have no idea at this point. I've seen a lot of talk that he's going to stay on the West Coast, maybe even go to Utah. But again, I don't really have any actual information on where he's going to end up. Just going to kind of have to wait and see how all of that goes. And I'll probably make a video about wherever he ends up, you know, whenever that news becomes official. But for now, that is what we know about Jackson Dart, which moves on to the next big quarterback in the portal, and that's JT Daniels. Now, he's not officially in the portal yet. He's just expected to enter the portal. He's basically in the portal, though. I mean, it can be assumed he will be in the portal, and um, that's kind of been the assumption for a while around the Georgia program. There's a lot of quarterback turnover there. That's we, we really don't know how all of that's going to pan out. So that's an interesting storyline to follow going forward. JT in particular has had one of the more wild stories of anybody in the portal, and he isn't even officially in yet, like I said. So JT, he's still a very talented quarterback, but he lacks the mobility that a lot of modern offenses employ. So that you know puts him a tick below the Caleb Williams type. He also is going to be a one-year rental. That kind of puts him below the Jackson Dart type of quarterbacks. Um, he's had a slew of injuries both in his time at Georgia and at USC. Um, and at this point, you could probably put him in the Tier 2 or maybe even Tier 3 of quarterbacks in the portal or, or at least just in college football next year. Uh, however, he was undefeated as a starter at Georgia. So by no means do I think that he is a bad quarterback or anything like that. 
Uh, he's incredibly talented. He's a very good quarterback with a pretty high ceiling, I feel like. It's just he's not in the same category as, you know, the Bryce Youngs, the Caleb Williams of the world. I have no idea where he's going to land at this point. There are a lot of schools that he's good enough to start at and a lot of schools that still need quarterbacks. I've heard things from Ole Miss to Cincinnati. I've heard Auburn mentioned they're in, a, in the market for a quarterback in the portal. I've heard Notre Dame mentioned. Um, I think North Carolina would be a good fit for him to go replace Sam Howell and still be at a very talented Power 5 program. I don't know. I don't know where he's going to end up. Definitely a storyline that I will be following pretty closely. Uh, I think all of those schools are gonna would be great fits for him. But like I said, with Jackson Dart, same story with JT Daniels. We're just going to have to kind of wait and see where he's going to land at this point. It's kind of a weird spot for him to be in on his second transfer already. Multiple injuries. The entire Georgia quarterback situation this past season was very, very highly documented and very strange. And he was a, a major component in all of that. So all the news around him right now is, is very interesting to cover for me. The next one I have is Makai Wingo, and Wingo is a smaller defensive lineman coming out of Missouri. He still plays on the interior of the defensive line, and he has a lot of explosivity because of his undersized nature. He's a very good pass rusher, a lot of upside. He's still very young. I think he only has one year of playtime under him. He has like three, maybe four years of eligibility left. He's expected to land at LSU, although this isn't confirmed yet, and I feel like he could definitely be a contributor at a lot of schools even if he doesn't end up as a starter somewhere. But I feel like LSU is, is probably going to be where he lands. That seems to be where everybody is expecting him to land. And he is at the very least good enough to be a rotational player for LSU on the defensive line. Could certainly crack the starting lineup as well. Very good pickup for Brian Kelly, who's in the process of trying to overhaul that entire LSU roster as of right now. And it, it needs a lot of help, especially in the two deep. They are lacking in a lot of areas. Um, there's a lot of roster overhaul happening over there and a lot of attrition at positions. So anything can help them right now, and he is a talented, young, pass-rushing interior defensive lineman, and those are hard to find. Brings me on to my next guy, which is Travis Dye. Now, Dye is somebody that a lot of people didn't even think was going to be in the portal. He was pretty shocking to find out that he was. But he's a high-level running back who honestly carried Oregon's offense last season in a lot of ways. And despite not being an elite-level athlete, or somebody with elite size, he's only like 5'9", 170-ish. He's incredibly effective at running the ball both between the tackles and on the perimeter. Um, and it's really impressive to see him do it because of the physical skills that he, that he lacks. Um, it's really impressive to see him run the ball as well as he does. I really can't see him leaving the Pac-12, and I fully expect him to return to Oregon, even though he is in the portal. Once him and Dan Landing sit down and talk about his future and his role at Oregon, I think he's going to stay there. I don't know that for sure, and if he doesn't go to Oregon, I have no idea what other schools he would end up at. Um, it's, it's very difficult to predict, especially for a position like running back. There's a lot of them out there, so he can kind of end up anywhere. But Travis Dye is another name to watch in the portal, although I do expect him to end up back in Oregon. And that will bring me to the next class of players, which is the guys who have already landed somewhere. So the first one in that group is going to be Zach Evans going to Ole Miss. Now, the Zach Evans edition for Ole Miss is kind of old news at this point, but I feel like it is important enough to mention here regardless. Just because of how talented he is, Ole Miss is losing a lot of offensive talent this season, particularly quarterback, and they have a lot of major questions to answer there still, and they're in the mix for a lot of portal quarterbacks. But Zach Evans is clearly going to be a feature player for Lane Kiffin, who's proven to be an elite-level offensive mind, and most people tend to think of Kiffin almost exclusively as a quarterback guy, and he is a quarterback guy, but he's also outstanding at putting together lethal and explosive running games that utilize the exact style of running back that Evans is, which is more of the one-cut, explosive-style back who can also get it done um, between the tackles. He's a very, very versatile third-down type of back. Um, that can that can be an every down kind of back and he does it all incredibly well he's incredibly talented um, and was incredibly talented coming out of high school he just had some off the field stuff that kind of cost him and got him at TCU so I think him going to Ole Miss is very exciting I'm personally very interested to see what a guy with this kind of talent can do with Kiffin particularly if Kiffin can pair him with a big time quarterback maybe they can be competitive in the west again this upcoming season like they were last year although losing Matt Corral is a big loss for them 
Next guy in this category is Mario Williams going to USC. I mentioned him earlier, but Landon Williams is a major addition for Lincoln Riley as he continues to flip Oklahoma players that he recruited and coached to USC. Williams is an elite level wide receiver. He will be a day one starter at USC. He should make a huge impact and losing him will definitely hurt Oklahoma in the long run. Um, but I feel like they kind of expected it. Uh, it's not like it really blindsided them or anything. Once the news about Riley got out, they expected a good bit of roster attrition. Um, but this also, like I said earlier, lends more credence to the idea that Caleb Williams is going to be heading to USC as well. But even if he doesn't, now we know, you know, Lincoln Riley is outstanding at developing and utilizing elite wide receiver talent. I'm sure he'll figure out something at quarterback, even if Caleb Williams isn't the answer. And Mario Williams will be no different for Riley at USC because they're starting to already look like a powerhouse offense that we expected Lincoln to build there. It looks like with the portal, he's going to be able to build it basically overnight. Mario Williams probably being the most talented of all of their skill players there. Um, at the very least, their most talented portal acquisition so far. And I fully expect him to pair up with Caleb Williams. And that'll be a very dangerous duo for the Pac-12 to deal with next season. The next name is Jaleel Billingsley going to Texas. This is a big get for Texas to help the offense out now that they've added Quinn Ewers. The Steve Sarkeesian connection here definitely helped out a lot in landing Billingsley. Um, as he was Billingsley's offensive coordinator a few years ago at, Ar at uh, Alabama, not Arkansas, at Alabama. Um, and there was and still is a lot of talk around Alabama that Billingsley almost had like a falling out of sorts with coaches after his performance in the national title game left a lot to be desired. He got targets on the first drive, and he just looked, I don't know, he looked out of sorts. He didn't look himself. His effort was questionable. And immediately after the game, he's in the portal. So there's probably something there. But that's not really the point of this. I mean, regardless, it's a loss of a potential starter for Alabama and a pickup of a likely starter at Texas where Sark will likely use Billingsley to great effect and with this super talented quarterback in Quinn Ewers. You add in Billingsley, that's going to be a very good piece for them, a piece that Sark is familiar with. I think it's a great pickup for Texas moving forward. Which brings me to my last name of the portal, and that is Jalen Kimber going from Georgia to Florida. This is a absolutely huge pickup for Florida. They are in similar roster overhaul spot that LSU is in, and so far Billy Napier is doing an outstanding job at building out a staff and a full recruiting class at Florida. He's also got extreme buy-in from the university as a whole, particularly financially already. I've seen a lot of news about things that they're upgrading there. And this also for Florida comes as a loss from the rival of Georgia there. So, so Florida gains in adding Kimber and, and, and their rival Georgia loses because that's where he's coming from. Kimber was a projected starter for, the, for Georgia last season. He ended up missing the whole season with shoulder surgery. Keely Ringo started where he was expected to. Um, but that, that Florida flip is huge there because he is a guy that was projected to be good enough to start or at the very least contribute to a national championship level team that was carried by their defense. So for Florida to flip him is a massive acquisition. He's a really, really good young corner. He's somewhat undersized as far as his weight goes, but he's got good length. Um, and yeah, he's got three or four years of eligibility still. Very interesting uh, and, and exciting pickup for Florida. Also an interesting note for Georgia fans to follow as they have now lost multiple defensive backs in the portal and Kimber, Latavius Brini, and Lavoisier Carroll, and Amir Speed, who just landed at Michigan State today. Um, they also are going to be losing Lewis Cena and Darion Kendrick to the draft. And so once again, the Georgia secondary is going to have a lot of roster turnover there, and that'll be something interesting to follow as we head into spring and see what Georgia may add in the portal after they did just sign a ridiculous signing class in the secondary in particular. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Let me know down below in the comments section your thoughts on some of these players, where they're going to end up going, and how impactful they will be when they get there next season, or if they're already there, how impactful will they be at that program when they get there. Also, if you have made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave a like because it helps out the channel tremendously. Also, subscribe to the channel because I will be uploading more college football content like this in the future, and I will upload as regularly as I possibly can with my schedule. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.